Okay, so I just want to touch briefly on the air conditioner. So this is just a photo from the actual location. Uh, fortunately, there's a overpass, so I could go up on the overpass and take a photograph of the actual air conditioner. I don't know the size or specs of this, but it doesn't really matter, right? Like you just take a rough guesstimate. And I'm not going to go into at length um, about how I build this, but I'll just point out a couple of tips. Because if you want to see how I build an air conditioner just like this, then just jump over to the vlog here. It's in, in uh, conjunction with the diner build. So if you go to that vlog number and scroll down under videos, you'll find it. And I show how I made the air conditioner. So you can see right here, like one of the main products that I use for vents and so on is actually clapboard number 4041 for HO in this case. You can use it for O2 because vents and mesh and all, it's all different sizes, right? But I use this quite a bit, um, which I'll use some of the vents on the face of the building as well. So you can see that I just build two sides with the clapboard. Okay. See? You can face it up or down, really doesn't matter. And then I just use 20 thou sheet for the uh, back frame here. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, to just make this look like a vent is I've just take some 15 thou and I'm just gonna uh, cover it halfway. So I'm gonna glue this like that. Okay, there's the one vent which will look like this vent. There's one vent there. And then the other one, I just scribe and snap, right? I'll, I'll do this one about halfway as well. So there's the corner of the air conditioner, right? And then you just pack it out. You, I'm just gonna take a piece of plastic here and uh, I'll probably cut a hole in the top here, like drill it nice or cut it out with a knife or clean it up with a knife first. Uh, it, it might make it easier before you attach it. And then I'm just gonna glue the hood on like this. It's really simple, it's just a box, right? It doesn't, like don't get hung up on the size because air conditioners, I mean, if I showed you photos of air conditioners, just, just Google them up like HVACs and it go, it, like there's no end to them. There's probably hundreds of thousands of different styles, right, around the world. So, yeah, so that's all I do. I build it up and then I just add some little gack like hoses. And then with this one, I'm going to stick a, um, like a fairly thick sort of foundation just to lift it up off the roof. Right? Because they always look better when they're... Um, sort of elevated a bit like that okay okay I should probably throw this in too because uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this on the diner HVAC uh, build or not so um, you can see here that I'm just using an SD35 fan okay, it's one of the smaller ones from my parts box and you can use the larger ones as well depending on the scale or the size of the air conditioner so what I do is like, this is the lid. Okay, so uh, if I can just show you the photo, see there's a fan there. I and mean, you can uh, make that fan if you want. You can cut that out and then run some rod or, you know, or whatever, right? Like that's up to you, but I'm just gonna use this fan here. And what I do is I like to drill a hole smaller than the opening, okay? Because, um, I want to file it to fit nice and snug, okay? Because if you try to drill the exact size, uh, the drill bit usually creates a bit of a burr and melts the plastic. I find if you drill a smaller hole and then just file it, like this way is I just take a XL uh, knife blade handle and wrap some emery cloth around it. And then I just, you know, just clean it up, right? Twist it. Like an old trick is if you do it out of solid sandpaper and you rotate it against the wind, it'll expand, ever expand in the opening and you'll get a perfectly round hole every time if you do it this way with a tight roll. 
okay? Or you can use a core like that if you want, okay? So now, uh, once that hole is nice and clean and I know this vent fits nice, now I frame, like I measure the top here and then cut this. That way, if I cut the right size first and I mess this up, I gotta do the whole piece all over again. Whereas this way, I know the hole's good and I've left a buffer around it. So now I just cut it. So this will go like this. Uh, this is already cut and scribed. Okay. So this is going to go on here like that. And then my, my fan for my HVAC like that. Okay. So you can see here, I'm just whipping together a fire hydrant just from a photo. It's all, it's all uh, evergreen tubing, just telescopic playing around. Uh, none of it's exact. You know, the dimension, the overall dimension is HO, but this is a good beefy size fire hydrant that's going to go by the building. So what I'm using is some tubing here and then I got some 80 thou which I got to file out a bit, or no, that's this one, 80 thou. I'm going to go in like that for these smaller ones. And then this one is a hundred thou. And then I'll just cut them and then drill a hole for a little knobby on there and file the top so that it looks like that. Add another little scrap. That's all it is, is tubing and scrap, right? You can see it, this is a tube with a, just packed in with a 80, I think I slid, slid an 80 thou in there. Anyway, you just play around and uh, get familiar with the product, right? That's the whole name of the game here. Like I'm just winging this, like I'm, actually, you know what? I don't think I've ever built a fire hydrant before now that I come to think about it. You know, in the past, I probably just bought them or something, you know, impulse in a hobby shop. But I thought, you know what? Why not try and make one? So. And then what I'll do is I'll add these plates, rings, just a couple on the bottom, and then leave some of this, and then just plant it, paint it and plant it. Remember how I talked about getting familiar with the product? So when you're actually building, right, you're learning. Like, like that's just a natural occurrence for anybody. So I'm just making a little vent here. There's the end that I drilled out. Okay, it's just a little vent. And this is a little, I don't know what it is. It almost looks like a kind of converter or something. It's, I just saw a photo of it. And I thought it was kind of interesting. So then, see, now I can slide this. This is like... Uh, uh, 80 thou rod into 1 8 tube and that's just going to go like that looks like a little catalytic converter or something but anyway just little things like this like these little vents see there's sliced uh, tubing over 80 same deal with a uh, solid or, or, or not a solid piece but a piece glued over the top right nice and juicy with some glue m melted on good and then just sand down the top so you got yourself a nice little vent there and then of course there's these just to quickly go over those those are cool but they were the stools from the diner that i just was innovative with and there's the fire extinguisher i'm working on and then the hvac and 
that's just a little box boarded up vent thing I, I found in my parts box I'll probably use as well. Okay, so I just want to point out just a couple of things in closing here. So I'm going to make one of these signs here with the cross buck and stop. These are really easy to make, right? Like uh, this is just like a uh, 40 thou rod or um, whatever the scale is, 364th, you know, bring out, pull out the ruler, right? If you don't have one of these, you have no business scratch building. <laughs> um, so these are decals from Microscale Decals. If you Google them up, they have a site. They take credit card, whatever. They have a, uh, you know, uh, an ordering kiosk there, and you can order these. Uh, there's a few of these. This is HO Scale 187 1430. There's a few other ones too. Of sign private railroad crossing signs etc and different size numbers oh, sorry for the glare there and then you know lots of interesting signage right and they're really easy to make I take a piece of 10 thou plastic scrap this is 15 thou I'll use this whatever because this sign is going to be facing backwards anyway but I just want to make sure that the integrity is there that the signage is there I'll, I'll be making several of these for facing outward from the layout. So you can see there's a number five number there, which I'll put on this pole. I just painted on some gloss on there and I'll put the deck on and then just brush on some um, mat. And I'll show you what I use when I do little decal jobs like this. Okay, number five pole there. Uh, is I just use this by a Vallejo gloss varnish matte varnish. It's all 100% acrylic resin. You can use this for adhesive too if you want. So I put gloss on, then the decal, and then when it's dry, just paint, hand paint, matte over it. You know, it's not a big surface, right? So it's not going to matter. So this here is just some flat paint, just to give the decal something to stick to. I find uh, with evergreen plastic, it helps to, to sand it with like 600 or rough it up. I like to put a coat of paint on there and then I'll just slide that decal on there like that and then all my signs I do this way. You can make the stand out of brass if you want but I don't I don't have any problems. I've broken one maybe in five years or something and then once that that's dry and sealed up like like I explained you just take a sharp knife and cut it out and then you can see the back side is not painted yet you just glue the rod with some solvent and then paint the back by hand. And then you can see the cross bucks there. It's just 10 thou scrap. And I'll just glue that on like that and then paint it. Okay.
Okay, so this railing was an extra part from uh, Glover Road. I had lots of little extras, you know. And uh, I found this. I thought, you know, this fit perfectly here. Like, I didn't have to cut it or anything. It was already painted as well. So I'm going to put this in here as a kind of a guardrail. I could face it the other way, but I like this side better. And uh, I'm just going to pop that in there. Um, I just want to say at this point, too, that, you know, uh, I've talked about uh, asphalt surfaces, you know, in the past. And people maybe have wondered why. Well, why would you use one eighth balsa wood here? So there's... Uh, I believe it's uh, three eighths plywood, uh, like like the substructure here is three eighths Baltic birch seven ply, quarter inch cork, glued really well, right, and then one eighth balsa wood. And the reason why I I, I like to use balsa wood for large expanses, uh, for one, it's really lightweight, and two, it's super stable. And when you coat it heavy with varathane like you know two three four coats and then paint it you can paint it any way you like um, I mean I'm going to work this over the part that's exposed later down the road because a lot of it gets covered like you know by this building etc uh, you can cut building foundations into it easy like it holds its edge like when you drill holes like they're not messy they don't crack and break away it's just so nice to work with like you'll be thanking yourself down the road when you start to evolve the scene and you got to work with it more. Um, yeah, so this little scene here is kind of cool, isn't it? I mean, I could do something like this. I could put a truck in here, you know. It's just, you know, how tow trucks are always in the back, you know, part of town somewhere, right? <laughs> like when you ever get your car towed and you got to go retrieve it, it's always in some you know, back, you know, slummy alleyway in a lot somewhere, right? <laughs> you know, like you got to take a cab to get there. But anyway, yeah, this little scene's kind of, uh, you know, shaping up kind of nice now. I got the little sign here. Uh, I've been working on those. Uh, this one's uh, subject to flooding, which I really like. It tells a story. Um, these are some older poles. Actually, these are from Glover Road as well, uh, carryovers, uh, until I decide to replace them because Glover Road's still a functional layout. Um, yeah, so uh, I really like this scene, the way it's shaping up. It's really cool. Uh, I'm going to show you the building probably following this one. The next episode, a week after this or so, is going to be the painting of the uh, building here and then some of the other details, poles, painting, and just other little riffraff stuff to kind of complete the scene with, okay? Okay.